Welcome back to the Zero Weakness Podcast, where we talk about how to be a better lifter, how to be a better coach, and everything in between. Make sure you subscribe and enjoy. Hello and welcome back to the Zero Weakness Podcast. As always, our podcast is sponsored by the lovely people at Establishment Coffee. So if you want 25% off your order and free shipping, go to establishmentcoffee.com.au and use the code 025. Nice. Hello, everyone. Welcome back, Thomas. Hello. I'm back. From Hamilton Island. How was it? I wasn't gone for very long. <laughs> yeah, it was great. It was great. It wasn't the best weather ever. Yeah. Uh, but it was It was nice. Excellent. Yeah. You went to Whitehaven Beach? Went to Whitehaven, flew over the, the Heart Reef, saw the Pussycat Dolls having a swim. What? Yeah, they were out there having a swim. Really? What? Yeah. <laughs> it would have been like a twenty, thirty thousand dollar tour that they were doing as well. No way. There's a, so there's a thing out there called Heart Reef, which is just a reef that's in the shape of a little heart, and it's like way out. You have to fly in a helicopter to get there. And it used to just be by itself, but now they've got a pontoon there, so people can pay to go out there for a day trip. But it would cost you tens of thousands of dollars to do it. And they were just out there having a the swim. Wow. Because yeah, they're in town at the moment. Oh, good. Kept dolls on that's tour. Cool. Yeah. Was Nicole how do you Scherzinger? Know, yeah, was she there? I think so. Yeah, the main one. She's I mean, I was there. in a helicopter. They were just little oh. like people down oh. in the water <laughs> with the stingrays. <laughs> how do you know they were the pussycat dolls? So did dolls? The, they point them out? The, and go, yeah, the, the, dolls. the driver told us. <laughs> <laughs> the driver, the pilot. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the pussycat dolls down there. We were like, what? <laughs> just waiting in the water. <laughs> what are they doing? <laughs> yeah, well, he's he's like, we're not supposed to tell you, but uh, there's the pussycat dolls are here at the moment, and you're actually going to see them when we fly over the the reef. Wow. <laughs> it's like, are well, they all still the same people or do they no, rotate? There's been heaps of uh, yeah. reiterations of the Pussycat Dolls. Yeah, that's what Oh, I really? Yeah, like, yeah. Why do you know so much about it? Because <laughs> <laughs> nah, I used to, Nicole Scherzinger, when I was younger, was like the hottest human on earth. Yeah. And um, so Pussycat Dolls have been around, what, since like the 70s? What? Yeah. Really? No way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the new version of the Pussycat Dolls that right. we know now. Uh, so it's I not like the Spice Girls that. where they're always the same. Yeah, no, that's, no, no, yeah. it's like the Wiggles. The wi- yeah, <laughs> I gotta wow. fact check this. Yeah, yeah, I hope I'm right. <laughs> We're about to find out. <laughs> the Wiggles, founded in 1995. Oh, oh so maybe not that late. <laughs> but yeah, it was a different group. It was Jimmy Iovine? They got them together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Who's that? Uh, one of the greatest. Uh, what would you call? It? Is he a producer, Thomas? Yeah, I don't know. Talent, talent agent. He's the one that got a uh, 50 Cent Eminem. Yeah. Uh, what? Who else do you get? Yeah. He's got his people. He's massive in the rap game. Right. Mm. Yeah, so there's been a few iterations of them. There you go. Yeah. So 70s, I was a little bit off. 25 years uh, off. Ah, close enough. Yeah. Close enough. You, get, you know the vibes. Pre-2000s. Yeah. Past members. Yeah, there's like one, two, three, six past members. There you go. Oh, wow. All right. <laughs> oh, wait. Hang on. Oh, no. Never mind. Sweet, what are we doing? Gratefuls. <laughs> uh, yeah, what are you guys grateful for? CJ, what are you grateful for, brother? I'm grateful that my roommate's a chef. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Because he brings home steaks most nights. So I'm, I have really nice steaks for dinner. Where is he chef at? Um, Hotel CBD. He's the guy that crashes scooter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so Wait, very so, grateful. So does he bring them back cooked or raw? Uh he brings them back cooked, but what he's done is he, he sears them. So yeah, they're pretty okay. much blue. Yeah. And then, yeah, I just cook them in the air fryer. Yeah. And Matt, you're so right. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. It comes out so good. The perfect. Have you tried it yet, Thomas? No. Nah. You're, you're a steak connoisseur, so it might be a little bit too far left for you. But in the air fryer, season it, whatever, a little olive oil, whatever you do, the air fryer for like six to eight minutes, and then you flash, uh, then you sear it after that. With butter and thyme. It's like literally the most perfect steak you've ever made. It's so good. Yeah. I remember seeing on like Instagram shorts and stuff that some people that are like are steak connoisseurs. Yeah. They actually prefer it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Which is such a huge call. Mm. But now I've tried, I'm like, okay, this is, man, this is close to the. Like, it's the best steak I've ever made as well. Mm. Like air frying them. I'm not that great. Like I actually enjoy cooking steak. Yeah. But, um, you know, I'm not into the alternative methods like you are, Thomas. You've got like. Sous vide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Meg got me an air fryer, air fryer for Christmas. Mm. Nice. Uh, so I'm only just new to the air fryer gang. <laughs> so I have to give it a crack. Yeah. yeah, they're the best. Best invention. What are you grateful for, Tom, bro? Uh, I'm grateful for the Zero team. And uh, 
This comes up because we've had a, a really rapid change in a few things uh, around a competition happening this weekend, and it's just really cool to see how we can, you know, within our team band together and, and solve problems. So uh, I'm really grateful that we've got the network that we do, the family that we do within Zero, uh, to make this sort of stuff happen. Oh, is there anything yes. you can say on here? No, I'll tell you after. All right. Get your dog, what are you grateful for? Um, my friends. I haven't chatted them out before. I'm like a real solitary person, so I spend a lot of time like on my own on the weekends, just happy in my own company. But I've been making more time for my close friends lately, and I love them and appreciate them very much. Yeah, well, we're grateful for you too. <laughs> so. I love you guys. Yeah. <laughs> love to hang out. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I am grateful for uh, my body. The omoplata. <laughs> My, but I'm just grateful to be able to do all the things I do. Nice. And still be in one piece. Mm. Can Over you elaborate? No, nah, just like playing lots of different sports, running, like being able to do anything I want. Well, hang Literally on. No. anything well, I, I want. Difference between playing a sport and winning a sport. <laughs> That's what Dominating I mean by a sport. Yes. Can you talk a bit more about it? Or uh, no? Look, I guess I've got a spare hour. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Tell us. About, well, you mentioned it on the last podcast, yeah. so we, we oh, need yeah, to know. Right. Okay. How did it go? Mm-hmm. So. I'm going to start with, uh, yeah, so I entered a jiu-jitsu comp and I entered it after doing jiu-jitsu for what, six weeks? So this week was Mark's two months of doing Mm -hmm. jiu-jitsu. So I entered it after doing jiu-jitsu, yeah, for like, what's that? When I entered it, I was doing jiu-jitsu for like six weeks, whatever it is. And then I decided to enter a comp and some people, it's really weird because some people are real encouraging of it in jiu-jitsu and some people are like, ah, you should probably train a little bit more because you're representing our gym and all the wins go towards like, Losses, all, all the records count and things mm. like that. I was like, oh, sweet. Like, so I entered and um, yeah, I won gold. I won gold in the gi uh, o- masters under 88 kilo class, but I weighed in at 82 kilos. So what? I actually could have competed in the weight class below. What does masters mean? So over 30 years old. Okay. Mm. And is it like powerlifting where there's like masters one, two, three, four, five? Yeah, but it's, <laughs> so it's not like powerlifting how... You know in powerlifting, when someone enters a category and there's only one of them in it? Yeah. Yeah, no, so it's not like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's, uh, I'm not trying to have a dig at anyone. No, 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 no. I, I know what you're saying. Yeah. Um, so no, there was- People definitely enter <laughs> masters to get an easy- There's definitely lots of people that do that on purpose, but keep going. So, but in jiu-jitsu, I really understand like why it's so big in jiu-jitsu because a 40-year-old black belt doesn't really, you know, versing a 25-year-old black belt who's super athletic and- you know, there's quite a there's quite a difference kind of thing. So masters divisions are really big in jujitsu, mm-hmm. and at this comp there were like 550 people participating over the past weekend. Yeah, so it was really cool. Southeast Queensland champ. So I entered the masters white belt division in my first match. I was a little bit nervous. Bridget was there because uh, he's pretty big, eh? Yeah, he was big and he had like four stripes. So he was a four stripe white belt. So and you get a, a stripe like every four to six months. And then once you is the next step, the next belt. Yeah. So he must have been doing jujitsu for I don't know, maybe almost two years. And I'd seen his competition record. He's competed five times, so he's done five comps. Isn't that a long time to be a white belt? Um, they say you can be a white belt for two to five years. Okay. If you're really good, you might get it quicker. Okay. Um, but yes, yeah, so I was a little bit nervous going up against them. And then as soon as we went out there, as soon as we grabbed hold of each other, grabbed our grips, that's when I knew I was like, nah, I've got this, I've got this cunt. I'm fucking, <laughs> sorry, uh, I've got this bloke. <laughs> this, this fella. <laughs> yeah. I've got, uh, like, without sounding like a wanker, because I'm still not very technically good at jiu-jitsu, I just started, but I was just way too strong for him. Yeah. And then I just, like, kind of held him on the ground. I almost tapped him out straight away with an Ezekiel choke on the ground. And then um, I passed his guard and won that. And then... Him and this other guy, they versed each other. And then, so I was straight through to the final because there's only three people in my division. And then I was straight, then he versed this other dude. They had a really good match. You watched their match as well? A little bit, yeah. Mm. So then I versed the winner of that match in the final. And yeah, I beat him in one gold. Nice. Mm. So two golds? Nah, so I lost no gi. But uh, no gi is, so people listening. Oh, so the first match qualifies you for the next match and then you won that and that got mm-hmm. you gold. Yeah, yeah, So one gold for that. And then no gi, you are just gassed by that point. Right? I was so gassed by that point and um, I got fucking, I pretty much just got the floor wiped with me in the no gi match. Yeah. And then match. your hair came out. Yeah, you that was the worst. Anything. So then my hair mm-hmm. came out. I reckon he did it on purpose, which is a smart tactic. He was like roughing my hair up my f- and then my hair was just in my face. I was like, oh, this sucks. Because in training, I just go, stop, I'm tying my hair up. 
Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, so I lost. Are there many people that have long hair? Yeah, um, there's a few there. But all the chicks get braids. Mm. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah so oh, that makes to, sense. Yeah, yeah. I need to get braids. I always wondered why fighters always have braids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's why CJ, that's why you always get braids for comms. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You go out on the town <laughs> afterwards and bash me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no one can but, get my hair in my face. <laughs> and so last night at Jiu Jitsu, I actually got a white stripe. So I got a stripe on my belt. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. So after. After two months of jiu I got a stripe. So I'm pretty Was there a grading Big process achievement. to get that stripe? Did you have to do like a grading thing? No. Nah. Right. So it was just okay. cool. At the end of the class, he goes, oh, by the way, I just got a stripe to award. This guy really surprised me at comp. He won gold. And I was like, oh, sweet. So I got a stripe. That's sick. So is it like powerlifting now? Can you go to your bio and change it to like Henny, Southeast Queensland champ, Masters one division? <laughs> yeah. Do you know what's funny though? White belt, white stripe. <laughs> yeah. It's so yeah. funny <laughs> though. Because it's like after participating in a few sports, there's so many similarities yeah. between them. Yes. It's, it's universal. Yeah, yes. it's so funny. Because I'll click on someone's profile that goes to the gym and it'll be like Masters uh, you know, yeah. thirty six to thirty nine, uh, Southeast Queensland champ. I'm like, huh? <laughs> yes. And you know, because powerlifters do it too. Yeah. Yeah. So it's uh, it's pretty funny. It but would be the <laughs> equivalent of me doing the log press for three weeks in a row and being like Tombo Seven Zero Owner Strongman Powerlifter <laughs> yeah. Strongman lo- Log Specialist. <laughs> Uh, oh, that's really cool, man. Yeah, yes. I told you you should have in the nogi hit them with the omoplata that I taught you. <laughs> yeah, uh, save it for next time. Well, you pull, you pull uh, guard and roll the arm over. <laughs> but it was cool. My um, my win in the final, I, I won pretty like uh, convincingly. Mm. So I hit him with like a like a judo like sweep, like a throw. Mm. You saw the uh, video. Mm. Like I baited he tried him. Tried to take you down, hey? Yeah, and you'll notice in the videos I don't breathe through my nose the whole time. I'm uh, I mean I'm breathing through my nose the whole time, so I'm like pretty calm. So this dude shot two double leg takedowns on me. I sprawled both of them and I could tell by the second one he was gassed and he had his hands on his hips. I'm like, okay, sweet. He's not going to shoot another one. So I kind of baited him by putting a leg out, knowing he was going to go for the trip and he did. And then I just fucking threw him on the ground and stayed inside. It was so clean. Yeah. Nice. It was really clean. It looked like a demonstration. Yeah. That's how clean it was. Legit. Because it never happens that clean in a match. Mm. And you just put him on his ass so hard. It was natural. (laughs) Yeah, it was cool. And, um... Yeah, fucking no. So I'm really happy. I'm fucking love. I'm loving. Uh, I'm not very patient when it comes to sports or anything like that. I like going in, giving a crack, and if I have enough, I'm like sweet. But jujitsu, there's like proper levels to it. Like all the blue belts at the gym would whip my ass any day of the week, and yeah, so it's a uh, it's pretty cool knowing that you actually have to spend a lot of time doing it. Yeah. I don't know, like, you know how sometimes you just get those freak shows that rock up to powerlifting and they're fucking. Squatting 300 after a month and it's like, oh yeah. But I guess there's outliers in any sport, but maybe it's because the comparison's a little bit different for me because I wasn't that good at powerlifting. No, I get it because mm. you, you do have to earn it a bit, a lot more in yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, you've got a, uh, yeah, I guess so. Mm. But yeah, yeah, that's it. Oh, that's Congratulations. Cool, well done. Yeah. Thanks. That's right. <laughs> awesome. All right. Um, what else have we been up to? <laughs> thanks, for <laughs> thanks for coming to my jiu-jitsu tutorial. Wait, did, did we all say what we're grateful for? Did you? Yeah, you yeah. said before. He was the last. He was the yeah. last, yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> what, are, what have we been up to? Tom, bro. Well, I had the I had the comp on the weekend. Makai. Went yeah, up how to was it? The we saw Khan in here the other day. So. Yeah, that was great. No, they ran a really, really cool comp. It was my first, uh, my first experience of the Zero bench. Like, we've got the Zero mono here. We've got the toasters. They have the new toasters, which are even better. But I got to bench on the zero bench. It's so good. So really excited to get our bench here in a couple of months. Um, but the comp was really cool. They did a great job up there. There were so many people. Like it was the I've been to a lot of comps up in Mackay, and that was by far the busiest one that I've been ever nice. been to. So that was really cool. Because did they run two comps in one day? Yeah, they had the APL comp, and then they joined a um, novice push pull in with it. Oh, sweet! Oh, cool! Yeah, yeah, yeah. just to fill out the numbers a little bit more. That's cool. You know, save it being split over two separate weekends across the year. Uh, so it was, yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, nice. Mm. Yeah, having a cool vibe. Saw Lachlan bench something ridiculous. Yeah, like one eighty. One eighty two point five, sixteen years oh, old. Unbelievable. Just turned sixteen as well. Unbelievable. I've been waiting for his bench press progress to start slowing down. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Because didn't Slowing he only bench, he benched 150 at Nationals last year, right? I think so, yeah. Now it's or maybe no. 150 at States and yeah. then 165 ish at Nationals. Yeah. And then one. Did he do Worlds? Seven. 
Yeah, one seventy something mm. at, at so nationals. When World, I benched one forty, he was still benching one forty. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so he's fucking wow. He's a weapon. So, man, I think we've spoken serious. about it before. He's super athletic as well, like yeah. really fast, really uh, explosive. He's just a good athlete. So he had opportunities to do Olympic trials for I think shot put and discus, um, and he's turned them down because he's more interested in powerlifting. Wow, That's cool. more he really just wants to have a. He doesn't. Love power from what Khan's told me, he doesn't love powerlifting as much as just bench press. So mm-hmm. he's, mm. he's doing powerlifting, but bench press is his, his true love. Uh, and he, I mean, he's fucking good at it. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> it, it sounds kind of funny as well, like turning down an Olympic opportunity for powerlifting mm. because we create the Olympics in our head to be something bigger than prob- probably what it actually is for kids like that. Mm. You know, like going to the Olympics, don't get me wrong, would be fantastic. But you don't actually get anything out of it besides pride. I was about to say, it's the same as powerlifting when people go, nah, it's way more prestigious. But you leave the Olympics the exact same way you'd leave a powerlifting yep. comp. Mm. Yep, mm. yep, yep, yep. You might even get some more prize money at a powerlifting comp, depending on what one Legit. you Legit. Mm. Honestly, like if he does the zero pro and he does well, mm. you know, he could, he would legitimately win more, more, more money. I remember, I don't know if this is still the case, but I remember one of the games, either Olympics or Commonwealth's, they got flown over there, but they had to pay for their flights back unless they were a medal, uh, a, a medalist. Oh my god! Like so, because I mean, the government's not going to pay for everything, especially for every single sport. Mm. So probably the big sports get looked after because they'd have their own like national body that has a lot of money. Something like swimming, but something small like synchronized swimming or shooting or whatever, they all have to self fund or look for sponsors or yeah. or whatever it is. Uh, so while it sounds kind of funny, it's 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 not that big a deal. Yeah. It's like um ruin the US I can't remember which Olympics it was, but the basketball team, they weren't happy with their accommodation. So they hired out at like a super yacht. Yeah. And just they paid for it themselves because they're all NBA players. So, you know, they're on the fucking biggest money you can get in the yeah. world. And then what they did is they all chipped in and paid for the rest of Team USA Olympics to have better accommodation and things like oh, that. Oh, really? Yeah. I thought I thought they have to stay in the Olympic Village for now, like water reasons. Yeah, I'm not too sure. There must have been some loophole but, or something. Yeah, I just remember that Team USA ended up funding a whole bunch of other, uh, the bustle team. Players all chipped in. When you've got enough money, you can do anything. Yeah. 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 Isn't that crazy? The endless supply of money. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, um, that was cool. What about you guys? What have you been up to, CJ? No, no much of the same. Nothing nothing new. Just, um, yeah, training, um, working, driving. Driving. <laughs> <much>. driving. <laughs> yes. I like it's, how it's now so that's a fun. thing. Now yeah. it's, it's so funny. You know how you mentioned, like, w- with jiu-jitsu, like, how it's similar in the sense, like, in people's bios? Yeah. yeah. So now I'm starting to get a lot of car owners that are, like, their Instagram's dedicated to their car, mm. and they've also got thousands of followers. I don't. It just yeah, weird how a car community. Uh, not even like the person. It's the car. It's mm. not a personality. It's not an influence. It's a car. Uh, uh, Instagrams are so big, and it's the same thing. It's like oh, tuned by this garage, you know, body kit by this owner, painted by so and so, sponsored, and you're just looking through like the credentials on a on the buyer on a car. It's like oh, that's. How funny is that? Like, mm. It's cool when you're in it, though. And yeah. right now you're in it, which is cool. Yeah, yeah. That's nah, good fun. Gidge, what have you been up to? Um, Not much. Just training. Training's starting to feel really good again. I had a bit of a sore back for a while, and now that's gone. So the numbers are starting to go up again. Nice. And I'm getting ready to go camping next weekend. I've actually never been camping before. so Never been camping? I've never been camping in my wow. life. There's a music festival that I'm going to, and it's over the weekend. So yeah. we're staying the night. So I'm really excited. Yeah, that's nice. about all I've been doing. What kind of uh, music festival is it? It's country music, James. Yeah. Yeehaw. <laughs> nice. Yeehaw. <laughs> Where Giddy, is it? Giddy up. <laughs> it's in Ipswich. <laughs> oh, what a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, have, you got a, have you got a padlock for your tent? <laughs> oh, no. Uh, what a surprise. Yeah, no, I understand. There's a huge uh, cowboy community out there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, it's going to be great. It's going to be fun. <laughs> I'd rather sleep in a tent in Woodridge than Ipswich. <laughs> Would you really? Yeah. Ipswich is the, the, the hood. Yeah. It's all right. I can take care of myself. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Uh, for the quotes this week, we're going to try something new. You're going <gasps> to give me a quote from a movie. 
I, I don't know why I'm saying it like you guys don't know what I'm doing. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you guys are going to give me a quote from a movie. You're not going to say what quote, what movie it's from, and then we're going to guess what it's from. Oh, mine's going to be super. Yeah, easy. same. No, that's cool. That's cool. That's <laughs> All right, cool. you go first, CJ. Oh damn it! Stage fright. Family. Fam- yeah, family. <laughs> <laughs> family. I, I live by a code. <laughs> um. <laughs> you merely adopted the darkness. I was born in it, Same. <laughs> yeah. raised by it, molded by it. Nice. I didn't see light until I was already a man. Already a man. <laughs> <laughs> that <was> so- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's an easy one. Yeah. Batman, Bane. Yep. Mine's, I know, Kung Fu. <laughs> Show me. Ah, uh, Matrix. That's, yeah, yeah Morpheus and Neo. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> I am Batman. <laughs> <coughs> I still a Vista, baby. <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> you got to put on the accent. Uh, Rocky Four. <laughs> Rocky Four. Uh, I actually found a different one that I want to do, but I don't know if you guys will know this. You still don't understand what you're dealing with, do you? A perfect organism. Its structural perfection is matched only by its hostility. Oh, alien. Yes, <laughs> of course. <laughs> Damn, nice. uh, all right, solid. That's <laughs> cool. <laughs> um, I'm gonna. So a few people uh, I've been noticing on. We need to do one with song lyrics as well. Yeah, okay, Ooh, that'll be next okay. week. Yeah. yeah. Have you guys been following along with Declan's Instagram lately? And he's got a new page called Cinephiles. No. Oh, is that his page? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah, so it's pretty I love cool. That. And um, I'm not. Very Are you sure it's his page? Yeah. Because it's in his Instagram bio. Ah. Yeah. So what is it? What does he do? He just like, like reviews films and movies and things. Oh, and I'm like, cool. that's pretty fucking cool. So I want to do a little segment about uh, what we're watching and any recommendations or anything like that mm. that we've got at the moment. Do you yeah, see? Nice. I just watched um, In Bruges last week. I'd never seen that before. That was a great movie. Mm. You rate it? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what it is? No. no, no. no. It's just an old, like, not that old, but it's uh, a British crime uh, sort of movie. Okay. Nice. Yeah. My Thank parents you. love British crime. They watch so much of it. Yeah, it's got Colin Farrell and the guy from uh, Lord of the Rings. To uh, not Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter. The guy with the funny eye. Oh uh, yeah. It's got um, him. Yeah. And the Voldemort guy. Ah. Oh. It's got both of them in it. Would you watch it? Um. Probably Netflix, but I use a VPN, so I don't know if I watched it on Australian Netflix or another one. Mm. Uh-huh. What VPN do you use, by the way? Nord. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's the one that's always on the ads on YouTube mm. and shit, eh? Oh, yeah, so Nord's there's legit. There's a couple of big ones. Mm. Yeah. I tried it years ago and I didn't have much luck with it, but now I've got a different TV. My old one blew up. Um, and it, yeah, it works great. Yeah, it's sweet. cool to just access like different countries. Because, you know, it's really annoying on Netflix when you're looking for a movie and they'll have like the sequel, but not the main movie. Or yeah. Something like that. Mm. That's annoying. It's yeah. cool to just be able to hop a few countries until you find it or just Google like what country is this available in and then mm. go to that. Speaking of CJ, something a hot tip for your mum is tell her to type that sounded weird. <laughs> tell her to type in just type in Filipino movies on Netflix. Okay. Is there tons? Uh, so many. Yeah. 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 On Australian Netflix. Yeah. It yeah. makes oh, sense. Wow. Like mm. it's such a big Filipino community yeah. over here. Yeah, legit. Yeah. So there's heaps of them. So I've been slowly going through some of them in my own time and uh yeah, they're pretty cool. Because nice. there's so many movies on Netflix that are on there that you won't see unless you actively like search for them. Yeah, they won't just course. pop up in the yeah. genres. Yeah. Yeah, and like non English movies. Mm, yeah. yeah. So there's probably, you know, there's probably near 50 Filipino movies on there. Have any of you ever given Bollywood movies a go? Like yeah. proper Bollywood, not the famous Bollywood movies, but like just proper Bollywood. Because Bollywood's movies. bigger than Hollywood, isn't mm. it? Yeah. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Nah. I haven't, but I've got friends that. Will literally rave about how good Bollywood is. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I've got friends that uh, rave about Korean film. Mm. Korean film is amazing. Isn't mm. it really dark? Yeah, it's so good. They're so creative, though. Eh? Yeah, mm. like all yeah, their really like, they do really good like horror that. and zombie films and all of that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very good writers. Mm. I watched. Uh, Let's start a page. Fucking better cinephiles. <laughs> <laughs> zero zero cinephiles. Yeah. Uh, me and Bridget actually watched uh, Creed. Creed. Creed three. Oh, the yeah. new one. Yeah, yeah. It's it's Don't spoil. I do nah. want to watch it. It's re- it's really it. cool. It's good. Yeah. But it was a little bit rushed. Okay. Like it's like they actually ran out of time. So like, all right, let's jam all this into yeah. the fucking into half an hour. Mm. 
I still really enjoyed it. Yeah, it was cool. Mm. So I only ever watch Marvel movies on planes because I like the I they're just like the franchise has kind of gone downhill. Mm-hmm. I don't know, Have just, you seen the new Thor? They ch- no, I haven't seen that. Don't bother. Yeah. Um, but s- for some reason, we ended up putting on Wakanda Forever. It, it's one of the most terrible movies I've ever <gasps> no, seen. No, it is not. That was I so loved bad. it. Terrible. You lie. That is so it's you so lie. good. <laughs> Absolutely shocking. Maybe I don't know. Shocking I saw it in the CGI. Cinema. Worst acting I've ever seen in a like in a big budget <laughs> film like that. Just I horrible. Thought it was great. Declan, chime in. Back me up, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I need your help here. I feel like all proper uh film buffs, like it's almost a shame for them to say they like a Marvel film. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> Especially in the last few years. Mm. I'd say in compa- it's hard, it's perspective. In comparison to all the Marvel films that have been released this year and last year, I'd say Wakanda Forever is probably one of the better ones. Yeah. But uh, I'd hate to watch any of the other ones. I don't even like Marvel movies well, and I like I'm, that one. That's what I mean. Like Thor was so bad yeah, and the most recent Ant-Man was terrible. I'm going to say- horrible. The <laughs> Thors are the worst out of them all, though. Yeah, they're just really cheesy. Mm. Like, mm. just cringy. Well, I, I'd never seen Ragnarok until my last, like, international plane flight, wherever that was. I watched it on the way back. And, yeah, it just I'm not into it. Mm. No. I, I, like, for me, it's a nostalgia thing. Well, I was going to say, um, like, I love Spider-Man 1 and 2 with Tobey Maguire. I love the old X-Men films. And if you watch them now, they categorically suck. Mm. But because we were kids when we were watching them, it was, like, mm. so good. And so they're so good now. Same with, like, Star Wars Episode 1. Sucks, but it's awesome. Nice. That was, like, yeah. you know, the movie Four Brothers with Mark Wahlberg? Yeah, and, yeah. So for the longest time, I said that was my favorite movie. I was like, that's my favorite movie. And I said it till I was, like, 25 or whatever. And then you watched it again. And I remember my <laughs> ex bought it for me on DVD. And so I was like, fuck yeah, my favorite movie. And I watched it and I was like, what the fuck is this shit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is the shittest movie I've ever yeah, seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, but you know, like 13 year old me was like, this is hectic. That's yeah. why so I don't good. rewatch any of the Disney classics from when I was a kid because I have such great memories of them and I know they're just not going to be the nah, same. Nah, but they're timeless. Yeah. yeah. Like I can get, to, I would happily sit here and watch Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, Lion King right now. Yeah. yeah. And I'd probably cry in all of them. Yeah. Lion yeah. King. That's the first time I cried in a movie. I just have such great memories. I don't want them to be ruined. They won't ruin your... No, <laughs> with, with animations, not so much. Yeah. But with It'll anything with VFX, it ages badly. Yeah. I was going to say, you, it would ruin it if you watch like the live action Lion King. Sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. I think I've seen that. Terrible. Yeah, I started the, the movies. Live action so. Aladdin. Terrible. The live action Jungle Book was actually pretty sick though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. It's just weird because when they do live action like that, they can't put emotion on the CGI animals' faces. So that, like, in The Lion King, they don't smile or anything. They just look like angry lions or angry hyenas or a warthog. A <laughs> warthog is not cute. No. But you can make Pumbaa cute in a cartoon. You know? yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's right. The live action one, they kept changing Timon and Pumbaa's lines. Like, the lines were different from the original Yeah, movies. yeah. Mm. And there's a lot of extra stuff in general. Yeah. Mm. Oh, what do we think of the Roll Dahl controversy? Talk Why? to me. What, what? is it? Tell me. What's this? Oh, they're, they're like updating the Roll Dahl books oh. to change the language. They are not. Yeah. Like I can't remember which one. Whether it's something to do with fat. Yeah, like James fat and the chain. Giant Piece or whatever. There's a, a thing where it's like, it's a fat little boy. They're going to have to change it to like, I don't know, robust. <laughs> what? <laughs> what do you guys think about That's that? Slightly, yeah. I think it's fucking stupid. It pissed yeah. me off. Proper pissed me off, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's fucked. I was yeah. watching some video on YouTube and it said in the year 2000 and whatever that all of Tolkien's work will end up in the public domain by that year. Does that mean that then they'll have the rights to change all of his stuff as well? Oh, I don't know. I don't know how that stuff works. Mm. It's really weird. Like, for me, I'm a huge rap music fan. Tom Bro, so some of your favourite rap albums, if you try sing along to them now... Oh, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> like, I'm not even talking about in-words in that. We don't drop in-words. But, but like... Some of the words they um, use, you're like, like what very, the fuck? Very homophobic. And, yeah. Um, and very, like, uh, degrade, misogynistic. Mm. Uh, and these guys will get slaughtered for that now. Mm. Yeah. Like, I'm surprised we don't see more of it. Because I was listening to, like, Jay-Z's discography the other day. I was like, he drops a lot of F-bombs in there. Yeah. And even yeah. 50 Cent, some of his... Uh, like, homophobic F-bombs, you mean? They used it a lot back then. Yeah. yeah. DMX. Yeah. Big time, yeah. Oh, watch, have you ever seen um, 
What's Eddie Murphy's like famous? Raw. Yeah, Eddie Murphy. And delirious. Raw? Mm, maybe yeah. I'm thinking delirious. I can't remember the one where he's in like red, delirious, uh, yeah. red leather or That's whatever. Delirious. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like the first half an hour is just nonstop homophobia. Mm-hmm. Like I remember watching it and feeling so uncomfortable because I only watched it for the first time a few years ago mm. and just being like, this, I'm not meant to find this funny <laughs> anymore. This is not allowed. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's happening to a lot of movies, uh, like. Um, Ben Stiller, he directed Tropic Thunder. Yeah. And that's starting to come out. People are starting to mm. make him apologize for that movie. And I, I like how he's not apologizing. Though. Yeah. Because, so what he's getting targeted for is the blackface thing. The blackface, thing. yeah. But have you read like why he did blackface? No. Because he was trying to point out in Hollywood, uh, like with racism and that, how they'd rather just get someone to play a black character than actually hiring a black mm. character. Yeah. So that's what he was trying to point out. Like that whole movie is a piss take at Hollywood. Yeah. Mm. And it's so funny because they have they're having a crack at him for the shit that no 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 I'm yeah. making fun of what yeah. what yeah. happens. So I think it's uh it was pretty cool. Like yeah, it is fucking it is fucked up, but I can see what he's doing. Yeah. All right, I want to change subject because this has <laughs> the potential <laughs> to go down a very political <laughs> rabbit hole that I really don't want to go down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Um, yeah, people liked hearing us talk about uh, random shit not to do with training, so I thought it'd be cool to check a check a few different segments out there. Um, <clears throat> the first topic I want to talk about today is uh, when you guys think of successful lifters who make progress, are there any uh, common behaviors or traits that you guys think of? Consistency. Consistency. Mm-hmm. I've, I've got I've got six here that yeah. um that are pretty good, and we can just deep dive into all of them. Yeah, mm-hmm. let's unpack the six and then see if we want to add anything else. So six common behaviors of successful lifters who make progress. Uh, and just to clarify for everyone, when James is saying successful lifters, that's what he means. Just people yeah. who are, are making consistent progress. Yeah, they so don't have to be best of the best. That's it. I also wanted to say th- there is some context. I need to add some context to this because I'm not talking about people who win comps, people who... Uh, when I say successful lifter, it's they're making progress. Yeah, because yeah, right. I get asked that question a lot when I do Q and A's and stuff. Is like because I work with a lot of the best of the best. People will ask me what are what are the traits you see in these elite lifters or whatever. That's mm. not what we're talking about. We're just talking about people who are making progress. Yeah. Mm. Um, <clears throat> so the first thing is uh, they all have relatively efficient technique and they move relatively well. Do you guys agree agree with that? Yeah, so when we're talking about technique and efficiency, it's like, wh- how do we actually measure efficiency? Because mm. that's really nice to say. And it's something that all coaches say, including us. You know, we want technique to be the strongest, the safest, the most efficient way. What the fuck does any of that mean? How do we measure any of that? And so when we're, when we're talking about efficiency, the best way to categorize it if we're thinking about technique is moving the bar from point A to point B I think not just in a way that's as sustainable and efficient in the moment, but in the long term as well. Because what's, sustain- what's efficient in the moment might actually be a really inefficient way to move weight for the long term. And that's going to be where lifters run into ruts or are unable to progress any further. So think, for example, of someone who has a mechanical advantage of rounding their upper back in a deadlift and they skyrocket their deadlifts and become a deadlift specialist, eventually that same advantage will become a disadvantage in that movement, more than likely. And not only that, that advantage there will be a disadvantage on the other two lifts. So efficiency needs to extend beyond what looks or feels good or does the job right now, but can be extrapolated out over time. Mm. Um, another thing to add, how do we, like like you said, we we categorize it. We It's so... Uh it's such an opinion-based uh, thing. If someone's lifting, like, how do you know that's a good squat? Yeah. For me, if it's like aesthetically pleasing, it's like, okay, that looks like a nice squat. Therefore, it's like, does that make sense? Yeah, and honestly, like, it, without any other gold standard, without any other um, yardstick to measure by, oftentimes, if things look good, they're probably pretty close to being good. Mm. And looking good to us is like watching a set and every rep looks the same, mm. and every rep doesn't make you want to vomit. <laughs> so yeah I, I i actually agree with you you know we, we have much clearer definitions of what we believe looks good at something like zero uh but for the average punter if it looks pretty good mm. it's probably pretty good yeah that's it like um i don't know I, this is a really weird comparison that i thought of the other day but i was thinking about like because we always talk about how do you know that's a good squat I'm like to me it just looks good it's like how do we know that person's uh good looking because they just look good to us I'm pretty sure none of us know the, 
the the standards of beauty or whatever it is that Hollywood or whatever made up. No, nah, I have a gold standard for everything. <laughs> <laughs> but do you know what I mean? We just yeah. make our own opinion up yeah. in our own head. Same thing with lifting. It's like, okay, that looks pretty good. Yeah. Um, that's a really weird comparison. But I don't no, know no, no. But that. like as, as for us as coaches, we have standards to measure that by. So like you and I will look at a squat and be like, that looks good because rule number one is being satisfied. Rule number two, rule number three, which is the rules we used in the zero system. We look at it and we judge it by that. And uh, what I find really weird is when you have coaches that will talk about, oh, you know, move however works best for that lifter and all their lifters technique looks differently. But then they'll look at someone and they'll be like, you have a really nice squat. It's like, mm. if that's a nice squat, then why don't you get everyone to move in that direction? Mm. Like it's it's this weird contradiction that exists in the industry because people don't have gold standards to measure by. Um, but yeah, I, I think uh, absolutely one of the traits of someone who makes consistent progress is going to be controlled good technique. It's just, it's that question, what is good technique? We know the answer for us. Um, if you're a coach or a lifter, you need to be able to answer that question for you. What if a coach doesn't know how to answer that? Is there any courses they could do? Or I'm glad you asked, <laughs> James, because we actually share our entire system, our understanding of these biomechanical rules, how to coach them, how to problem solve, how to program for them in the zero coach development system. Nice. The next one is they all manage their nutrition. If only there was a course that could do that as well. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> we actually do. We've got a zero nutrition course coming soon. Very soon. Yeah. Very soon. <laughs> but in all seriousness, so the next one, I'm pretty sure we do this every episode now. Yeah. I yeah. like it. Uh, um, all, uh, the third one that successful lifters who make progress. Wait, wait. You just can't just gloss over them. We've got to talk about them. Otherwise, we're going to finish in two oh, minutes. No, 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 no. So this is the... No, we've gone through... Sorry, sorry. This is the second one. Second one. So the second one is they all manage their nutrition. Yeah. What do you mean by that? To an extent. Um, <clears throat> they're all pretty good with... Uh, like, they put as much emphasis into their nutrition as they do with their training. And hitting their macro targets mm. consistently. Do you do Maybe? that? Not at the moment. And that's why my lifting's <laughs> not great right now. <laughs> but when you were at your best... Yeah, I was... I was Counting my calories every day. I was counting, my, tracking my macros. I was doing everything right and my lifting skyrocketed. When you do the yeah. right things, yeah, that's what happens. I think we can all, all attest to this as well. Like, no matter how good our training is, if our nutrition fucking sucks, we feel like our training sucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so like, that's why I wanted to ask and, and sort of clarify on that because being consistent with nutrition isn't enough because you can consistently under eat. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah. like when it comes to managing nutrition to – create consistent progress I, I would measure that as eating enough to fuel progress mm -hmm. eating enough to fuel performance and progress so managing nutrition in terms of monitoring it and controlling it yes is super important uh, but people are really good at being you know consistent or even over the top consistent or pedantic about their nutrition but not eating enough and not seeing the progress because of it you know the people that are have that sort of bad relationship with nutrition and food and hyper or over manage every aspect of it but don't really know what they're doing mm -hmm. um, that's that's where it gets shady in terms of progress so i would say managing nutrition yes by the means of using it as a conduit to, to performance mm. um <clears throat> another trait or behavior of a lifter who makes progress is they all remain relatively disciplined and do not rely on motivation. We talk about this all the time. Um, but I think that's a really good one. Like, mm. you know, for me personally, if I don't want to train, I'm, I'm not very disciplined. So I'm like, if I don't want to train, I'm just not going to train. Mm -hmm. Where versus someone like you, Thomas, uh, you're, you're very consistent as well, Bridget. Um, CJ, I'm pretty sure you're consistent as well. You guys will just train no matter how you're feeling. So, oh, it's Wednesday, I have to train kind mm. of thing. Mm -hmm. Where I'm like, ah, fuck it, I'm not training today. Do you think, like, for yourself, Bridget, would you call that discipline? Would you say you're disciplined with training? No, it's just a part of my life now. Mm -hmm. It's my lifestyle. I don't even have to think twice about it. I just come in and, and I do it. I don't think of it as discipline or motivation. Can you think of any part of the whole like training, eating, everything to do with performance that you have to discipline yourself on? For me, it's food. A thousand percent food. Because I have the opposite problem. I like I don't eat enough. And I know I don't eat enough and it takes a lot for me to eat enough. So I have to literally like force myself to hit my 
my macros and get mm. enough calories in every day. And then eventually it just it, it becomes natural, but it takes a long time. Mm. And it's really easy for me to fall off the wagon. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, James? Are there areas of either like running or jujitsu or whatever that you have to find discipline for? Um, <clears throat> I don't know because I'm I'm a I'm all over the show, so I'm very good at uh, I'm very good at becoming relatively skilled at any. I'm not trying to sound like a wanker, but I'm really good at getting getting the basics down for most physical activities, and then from there it's like okay, cool. And I don't know what, why my head does this, but then I kind of get bored or something, and then I'm like, all right, <laughs> I have to try something new, so I'm going to try something new. I always do it. I can mm. tell you exactly why. I do yeah, <laughs> but I also the reason why I try so so many uh, physical endeavors is because a lot of people don't do it, and a lot of people are just afraid to do it. So I wear it like a little bit of a badge of honor that I'm like, nah, like at this point in my life, everything's a hobby. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to be. I'm 31 years old. I'm not going to be a professional or anything. So I want to, you know, by the time I get to old and grey, I want to say, "Fuck! I wish I did that when I was younger. I wish I did this. I wish I tried powerlifting. I wish I tried." Because how many people do we know that want to do something but they just don't do it? Yeah, for sure. And how many people do we know that still want to try powerlifting but they're like, oh no, I'm still not strong enough? And it's mm. like, well, that's the dumbest thing ever. Because mm. exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What about you, CJ? Is there anything that you can think of in all of this that you have to find discipline for? I actually, honestly, probably all of it still. Mm. Even training, like, uh, I feel like now I've lost, like, all my newbie gains. So now it's a grind. And in some ways, even getting injured, it's gone backwards. So, yeah, like, especially the days that I'm not already at the gym, like, for work or whatever, and I haven't, you know, I need to come in just to train. And it's like, oh, it's the drive. It's this, like, all, everything kind of goes into your head. And, yeah, it's it, it's a battle, but... Uh, it's also, yeah, it's just also a mix of it's part of my life, like, you know, but also you still got to get up and get it. Mm. You know, no one can do it for you. Um, mm-hmm. I'm actually the same as CJ. I need to work on discipline and everything. Yeah. My nutrition sucks, but it's still better than probably 80% of the population. Like I still eat relatively well, but it's so inconsistent. Mm. Like there's some days I'll have one meal the whole day. There's some days I'll have fucking 10,000 calories. There's some days... You know, I'll go three days and I'm like, fuck, I've only had probably 2,000 calories or it's just so inconsistent. Mm. Mm. Have you guys tried that chicken place in Ormo? No. No. What's it called? Southern. Oh, yes. What's it called? Uh, I don't know, but Southern Fried or something like that. Southern. It's good. Really good? (laughs) It's so (laughs) random. No, it's apparently really good. Yeah. Yeah, it is good. But yeah. uh, But like, why? Oh, I'm just curious. I want to try it. <laughs> it just popped into my head because we're talking about nutrition. Nutrition. <laughs> but yeah, it's funny. Like you say, like it, I think you talk about comparison or like, I'd say in comparison to the most of the population, I'd say we're very disciplined. Mm. Um, I even have people tell me like, oh, did you train today? Like, yeah, it's like, wow, you're so disciplined. It's but like, yeah, but that's what I mean. Yeah. But we're then, not, we're not having to discipline ourselves to do it. Like mm. for them, they can't fathom it because they don't want to train at yeah. all. We want to train. And then mm. when you're talking about like, we think we're relatively disciplined, but then we're surrounded by people like Thomas and Bruce. Yes. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, they're proper discipline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when we look at them, we're like, fuck, I'm not disciplined. Yeah. But that's what I mean. Yeah. I'm, I don't see myself as disciplined. I don't see mm. myself as disciplined Like if, at all. if I have to pick out of all of the things with training that I'm not very good at in terms of discipline, it would be doing rehab for injuries. Mm-hmm. Because part of my attitude is like, I'm just going to get injured anyway. <laughs> part of my attitude is <laughs> I know that I'm going to like go away this week for whatever I'm traveling for that week. And I'm not going to be able to hurt myself that week. And that'll be my rehab. <laughs> like, <laughs> there's, there's always something that I can find to like skirt the responsibility <laughs> of having to do some dumb little bandit drill in mm. the gym. Uh, and I'm pretty good at doing the stuff that I have to do, but I, I definitely don't do it to the degree that I'm probably yeah. meant to do as prescribed by the physio at the time. Mm. Uh, but like, I don't see my training habits or my eating routine as discipline. I see them as necessary and not even to my performance goals and desires, but just the function of my head. Like I have to have that routine to exist. Otherwise I go crazy. Mm. Like I really struggle with traveling because of that loss of routine. It's just how I am as a person, you know, and some people are wired that way. And so when something falls into the routine, breaking that routine it it takes discipline like for me to not prep my meals and to not train would be work yeah wow 
So it's yeah. it's kind of the opposite. Yeah. Nah. I, 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 I mean, I'm not wired that way. I'm not saying you're wrong. <laughs> Did say nah like that? But yeah. Nah, like, actually you're wrong. <laughs> you know, it is discipline. You are wrong. No, but like, uh, yeah, for me, I, I'm not wired that way. So it's still, you know, people say, oh, wow, so disciplined. It's like, yeah, but I don't want to do it as much as you don't want to do it. Yeah, yeah, Like yeah. it still feels the same. I still don't want, like the days where I don't want to come to the gym. Like I still have that. It's whether you do or not. It's, yeah. It, it's not like, oh, I lo- like- Every day, I'm like, this is the the highlight. It's mm. like, no, th- this still does suck. Like it's, most days for me, it's it's just that like step thing. It's like discipline creates habit, habit creates intrinsic mm. drive, kind of thing. Or yeah. uh, you know, whatever order it's in. But I'm sure you guys have heard me warming up for bench and being like, I don't want to do this today. Mm-hmm. Mm. I say it out loud a lot. But yeah, it's kind of like yeah. th- the habit overrides that. Yeah, like, mm-hmm. I don't want to do it. Who cares? I'm doing it. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I'd, I'd even go as far as saying to that. I mean, I've been lifting as long as you, but I've been lifting for a decent amount of time. You know, th- we talk about motivation and being like, oh, hyped for training. I would almost say the percent, like percentage wise of when me being really motivated and like on fire to train versus can't be bothered, don't want to do it. I would say that is high. Like there's more days where I'm not mm-hmm. on cloud nine to train. I would say that's the majority <laughs> of my block. You know, not, it's it's lesser the, the days are lesser uh, of the ones that I'm like so hyped. Yeah. To, you know, yeah. The honeymoon period. Well, it's just like James was talking about last week, you know, the difference between working out and training. Mm. Working out is a choice that often brings like a little bit of endorphins. Training is work. Yeah. Mm. It's, it's yeah. literally like going to your job. Mm. It's, it becomes less of a choice. Mm. I think probably the, mo- the thing that didn't come up that most people need discipline on is just getting to bed on time. I've yeah. got yeah. yeah. I've got sleep hygiene in here. So sleep, uh, that's a huge one. Yeah. yeah. I'd say it's one of the biggest ones. Mm-hmm. Like of the of yeah. the big three rocks of nutrition, sleep, training. I reckon sl- I, 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 this is my personal experience, but also my experience watching people with poor sleep habits. I reckon it's probably the biggest thing that that affects like people's performance. When you guys have a shitty day at work, what's the most common reason of having a shit day at work? No, every day is a great day at work. <laughs> Zero. Thank you very much. <laughs> but as we all sleep so well, yeah. do you know? Because you had a shit sleep and you're grumpy, and it's just yeah, you don't want to be here. Yeah. Mm. Like that's the most common reason for my shitty days. Mm. It's like, well, I slept like fucking garbage last night. Yeah, and now I'm ruined and now i've had seven shots of coffee and now i'm just very anxious and you know, tired you know it's bad when james says he hasn't slept well because like you're <laughs> sleeping well is two and a half hours of broken sleep <laughs> like i just should sleep you mean you didn't sleep <laughs> uh yeah sleep hygiene is huge so that was actually last on the list but i've got one i've got a couple more um so the people six common behaviors of successful lifters who make progress another one is people who enjoy the process they're yeah. not so yeah. outcome driven. They're uh-huh. th- they're very invested in the process. Yeah, and they're just loving the journey they're on. Uh-huh. And like that's that's something you have to be able to. That's something that comes with experience because with experience you can look back and you can zoom out and be like, here's where I'm at on this map towards my goal. Uh, because in the moment, just like we were talking about, training is not always fun. Mm, no. So like the sessions themselves might not be fun but the process itself is enjoyable because you can see how it maps out over time and, and where it's going. And so like if you've had these wins where you've started somewhere and you've ended up somewhere, now you've started there and you're going towards the next thing, you know what that looks like already. So you can be like, oh, I'm in my phase of high volume or high reps or tempo or whatever it is. And you can be like, I may not enjoy this process, but I know what it's going to do for me. Mm-hmm. And that only comes with time and experience. But yeah, absolutely. You have to. Then I mean, like that's a, uh, what I would say keeps me so habitual is because even though you know I have bad days in the gym sometimes, I I really love the process. Like yeah. I love training. Mm-hmm. And I know you've said this before, but like the whole reason we got into powerlifting was because it was fun. It was mm. a hobby. That's mm. why we do it. What's yeah. the point of doing anything if you don't enjoy it? Mm. Yeah. No. I'd, uh, like. I think that's essential is to, you, you've got to lo- love the process. It mm-hmm. can't just be the numbers on a bar. You, you got to, especially like, uh, it's a lesson, that a new way I've learned this lesson again is like being injured. 
you know, before, it, like, oh, I hurt my back, before it was diagnosed, of course, all the worst case scenarios go to your head and you think, oh, am I ever going to lift again? Am I ever going to get stronger? Or is this the end of the line for me? Like, all those thoughts come into your mind. And I remember talking to Mitch about it. And, I mean, that conversation kind of all went down a very Goggins mindset road. But he was kind of like... Hard. Yeah. But he was kind of like saying, like, you know, no, you will lift again. Like, this won't be the end of you. Like, doesn't matter the diagnosis, like... The, the human body is amazing. You, like the process, like trust what? it. And How I was talking to a friend <laughs> the other day <laughs> who's telling me he hurt his back. <laughs> I said to him, you're going to be a little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually really yeah. good. That's really good. But you have to hear like the crunching of the rod. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to a friend. <laughs> and he's like half uh, puffing. But yeah, so, something that we brought up, uh, I was like, you know, how can... Um, I have that excuse of like, oh, giving up on powerlifting or whatever when I see like people that have come back from worse. And, mm. you know, we, we, we even brought like you up, Thomas, and the injuries that you've gone through <laughs> and all that. And it's like, but look. It's the only time I'm remembered. Yeah, <laughs> actually, Thomas is fucked. <laughs> but he's squatting more than he's ever squatted in his life. And then like even you, like you've torn your Achilles and you're running marathons. Like that's pretty stu- like insane. That's my fa- That's my favorite when people say, yeah. use an injury as an excuse. I'm like, you better shut the fuck up right yeah. now. <laughs> like I've snapped the same Achilles twice. Yeah, and, and you run marathons. And that's like, like, that's honestly like, not to get cheesy and sappy, but you two were like what got me mm. going like I will lift again. Like I will this isn't the end of me. Yeah. yeah. Um, That's how I got into powerlifting. I was like, well I can't run and play sport what I'm usually doing, so let me do something else. Mm. So I got into it. <laughs> let me do a sport for the disabled. <laughs> 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 but do you know what I mean? It, it fucking saved me during that time though. Mm. I was like, wow, I found a new sport that like and you know I prolonged my rehab for so long because I was so happy just powerlifting. Yeah. So I probably could have started running and stuff earlier, but I was like, nah, I'm having so much fun just doing this. I mm. don't really care right now, which is uh, yeah. so shit, but yeah. Yeah. It's, it's the gift of injury. Mm. <laughs> gift the, of no, there's, the a gift. Book, there's a book called The Gift of Injury. Right. Yeah. I wouldn't be here now if I didn't snap my Achilles. Mm. I would not have started powerlifting. Yeah. It, it gives you a huge perspective, like mm. a huge yeah. perspective shift. Massively, massively. Huge lesson. Um, another thing is these guys... So six common behaviors of successful lifters, of successful lifters who make progress, they don't compare themselves to others. Yeah, that's a big one. Mm. Comparison is the thief of joy. It is. Mm. Mm. They're just so focused on themselves, happy with their own progress. They don't fucking. How many times have you spoken to someone that's so miserable about their own progress because they've seen someone on Instagram? Mm. It's like, why the fuck are you... I've got a client who's a little bit older and all he does is go on about dude, people he's seen on Instagram lifting. I'm like, mate, why the fuck are you talking about... That's John Hack. <laughs> <laughs> John Hack's fucking... You're not John Hack. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I don't fucking go shoot hoops and go, fuck... LeBron James scored 40 <laughs> in the NBA. <laughs> do you do you guys think that there is such a thing as healthy comparison? Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's nothing I, wrong with being competitive. I think that's that's the important stipulation there is that like comparison to the point where it becomes self-degradating is the is the the real thief of joy. Because mm. I think it can be quite powerful to see what other people around you are doing, but it has to be like with like. You know, like it has to be this person's in my weight class around the same strength mm. level, mm-hmm. um, and using that to make your uh, your application of yourself to your process better. But know that your results are completely determined by you and not what everyone else is doing. Mm. So I think it's okay to watch other people and to be you know have that competitive drive, but questioning why are they doing well and why am I not doing well probably isn't the most healthy behavior. No, mm. no. It was the same we were talking about, like, with discipline, like, you know, I got mates that would say, oh, wow, I'm so disciplined with training, I'm so consistent, but I don't feel that way when I look at you guys, and I see, like, you, Thomas, there's times where you sound and look like you're sick as a dog, Thanks. and you're still training. <laughs> <It's just laughs> on the daily. Yeah. <laughs> like, proper sound, so sick, and you're still training, I'm like, oh, I can't not train because I've got a flu, like, it's, yeah, that, you're always looking... Where you can be better. 
This podcast makes me sound a bit decrepit, doesn't it? <laughs> no, it's always broken, <laughs> sick, <laughs> tired, motivating us. It's our motivation is that you're still doing it through thick and thin. <laughs> that old like crab in the corner <laughs> freaking around. Um, so that's pretty much it. <laughs> What's next, James? <laughs> On that note. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I want to do this. <laughs> All right. I got a few. Uh, I went on Reddit before. Oh, nice. Okay, this is making a lot more sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I went on Reddit before and I just typed in fucked up uh, would you rathers. Nice. So I've got three today. We can elaborate on them. They're pretty fucked up. They're pretty funny. Um, these are off Reddit, by the way. So I didn't come up with these. So don't fucking judge me. <laughs> <laughs> so it's uh, would you rather? There were some really fucking horrific ones on um, there. Let's I, hear them. Like, no, would the, the, no. Yeah, I had to filter. There were so many of them. I'm like, I'd love to say that yeah. on the podcast, but someone will take it out of context. What, what's the level up from R rated? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's <laughs> fucking, it's next level. <laughs> we just like, Let's find out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the first one isn't too bad. Would you rather solve climate change but get no credit for it or win the lottery? How much do I win? Uh, 50 million. Uh, yeah, I'd win the lottery. The lottery. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Tom, bro? Call me selfish, but yeah. Yeah, no, I'd win the lottery. For sure. I'm going climate change. Nice. But you get no credit for it. Yep, that's okay. Has climate change affected your life? No, uh, but like if people think that I'm the good guy by listening to this podcast. <laughs> 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 so he is like still getting credit no, for no, it. But you know, no, you can't get any credit for it. <laughs> but are we talking about like, okay, greenhouse gas emissions? Because all you need is one massive volcanic eruption and then all of that's out the window. Oh, righto, David Attenborough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> all right. Sign me up for 50 mil. <laughs> righto, Greta Thunberg over here. <laughs> <laughs> getting carried out by the cops. <laughs> oh, geez. Oh, uh. Yeah, I'm taking the money. Yeah, so yeah, you have uh, to. Yeah. You have to believe in climate change to, yeah, s- yeah, to solve it, right? Yeah, yeah. I, nah, fuck. Yeah, I'd rather million. have fifty million. Yeah, hard out. Um, for ten million dollars. <laughs> oh no! Would you punch your mum in the face as hard as you can, Jeez. and she can never find out why, oh. or on purpose? Uh, <laughs> drop a family member's newborn baby and act like it was a mistake for ten million dollars. <laughs> It's kind of like, who are you less likely to kill? My mum's pretty tough, so <laughs> Soz mum. No, but so you punch her as hard as you can, yeah. and you don't say why. So she could be, she, when she's like, Thomas, how could you? You just have to be like. <laughs> My <laughs> mum's too much of an angel. I'm <laughs> dropping the baby. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah oh, it would break I, my heart. Yeah. I would never forgive myself. I, I'm the same. Yeah. It'd kill me. Inside, yeah, yeah. You're just choosing that because you know your mum would kill you straight up. <laughs> yes, that too. I, uh, I've got a niece now. She's so cute. I'd way rather punch my mum. Oh man, that's I so drop yeah, a baby. See, my, my niece and nephew aren't newborn babies anymore. Could you yeah. imagine standing up with a baby in the hospital and you're like, all right, now's the time. Can yeah. you drop it on a couch or something? Oh. <laughs> Bridget, <Yeah. laughs> am I standing in a jumping castle? <laughs> <laughs> Am I in a foam pit when I do this? Do you know what I mean? I can way easier. Maybe it's because my fucking mum's given me so many hidings in the past. <laughs> I can I hit her like, back. Jay, Jay, James, why are you time. smiling? Yeah. Why are you smiling, James, when you do this? I'd probably punch her shit. All right. Why is there a grin on your all face? Right, now you're an adult. We're going toe to toe. Filipino mums. But no, nah, they got too many weapons as well. Do we know if the baby gets hurt? Don't know. Yeah. This is what I mean. Like, I feel like if I drop a baby, it's more likely to die than if my... Uh, punch yeah. my mom in the face. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. I can't and punch I, my mom. I, just, yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't kill mom. someone, so you're a murderer. Is that what you're saying? You're yeah. happy to kill someone. Yeah. <laughs> mm. That's, That's what not guaranteed that we're a murderer. That's what I thought. No, my mum, I'd yeah, I'd happily no. punch as hard as I could. Yeah, I'd ha- as hard as I could. No, okay, where <laughs> were I mean. yeah. like, Then you'd be a murderer. You'd kill yeah. your mum. Nah. Yeah. Rosalina Castro Fiel injury. <laughs> She's got a chin on her. I can tell. She's been through some shit. Nah. My mum's so little and frail. If she knew, that's different, right? Mm. If she was like, for 10 million, CJ, what are you doing? Yes. Yeah. I'd be like, all right. But yeah, nah, it's the not, fact that especially they don't not know. as hard as I could. Uh, yeah, I'd, I reckon I could kill her if it was as mm. hard as I, I could. I was just thinking, <laughs> you're a big, strong human yeah, being yeah, as well. My mum's just probably kill most people yeah, if yeah, you yeah, punch them as like, hard as you yeah. could. And you can punch properly. Yeah. yeah. So, so not as hard as I couldn't. And yeah. 
Thomas, your mum's Lebanese. She'll fucking, <laughs> she'll fight back. She's good. They're refugees. She's, yeah. They're just yeah. like your mum. She's yeah. been through shit. Yeah. 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 I've been through far worse than this. <laughs> and what you can do. Yeah. <laughs> Thomas, is that all you've got? <laughs> <laughs> Hit me harder. <laughs> You're a disgrace to our ancestors. Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. That's such a tough one. All right. Would you rather hear people's thoughts or see dead people slash ghosts. Dead so, people. Easy. Yeah, could you imagine just walking around or just walking? Imagine how insecure you'd be if you mm. could just hear every single thought. Yeah. Nah, gross. Yeah, Can I you interact know. with the dead people or no? Or do you just see them? Um, interact with if you want, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I don't no, know. like are they going to haunt me and stuff? And like, Well, I yeah. guess they can't really haunt you because you can see them. Well, it's like sense. You just make friends with mm. them. Yeah. yeah so I don't you know. Try. Yeah, cool. I'll go with dead people. Could you imagine just fucking hearing people's thoughts all the time? Nah, gross. I don't know. That's a tough one. Because I think both are terrible for me. Because mm. I feel like, yeah, hearing people's thoughts all the time would make you feel very insecure. It, I reckon it would also make you judge people. Yeah, yeah. Not just insecure. It's like I think of the cooked stuff that happens in my head. Yeah, yeah. We all have like cooked stuff that That's happens what I mean. in our heads. I don't want to know how cooked everyone else is. Yeah, 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 yeah. You'd, lo- you'd lose a lot of respect for people for the thoughts that go into your, their minds. You know what I mean? Like and that would be hard to unsee. Mm. It would just be so depressing. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So many people would have such like sad, sad, sad yeah. stuff going on. And and I th- yeah, th- there's that, and I, I also feel like yeah, because I mean, there's a lot of things that we think in the heat of the moment, but we don't do. Yeah. You know what I mean? But if you've seen the thought. It's hard to unsee it and not judge their character. Oh, hundred percent. So there's that, but also seeing dead people would haunt me. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know which one's worse. Oh, could you imagine just getting up to brush your teeth? Like, oh shit. Yeah. Yeah, oh. that's what I mean. Or like, because I would guess dead people don't sleep, so I'd hate to like have someone standing by the bed. <laughs> you know, like. I don't Do know. you reckon it would haunt you though, or just become normal? Nah, it'd haunt me. Just yeah, it might become yeah. normal after mm. a while. But thoughts. Maybe. People have different thoughts all the time. Yeah. They're both, oh, they're both horrible. And I guess if you have like the same ghost that's haunting your house all the time, you just become your mate. <laughs> you know? Become your mate. <laughs> CJ's gone crazy talking to the wall again. <laughs> oh, that's the bro. <laughs> that's the bro. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, mine's definitely dead see dead people. people. Do we have another one? No, nah, that's oh, it. Three for today. Awesome. Three oh. next week. On that note. We're all good. <laughs> we're all good. Bye. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Bye. On that note. Bye. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to the Zero Podcast. If you want more information, head to our Instagram, zero underscore weakness. Hit the link in the bio for all of our services and any information on upcoming workshops and events. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review so we can have a broader reach and answer more people's questions. Thank you once more.